Hello, M3 judges. This is Team 13202 submission for Keep On Trucking. I'm Joshua Tsai. I'm Polina. And I'm Brandon. I'm Tsai. <laughs> and I'm Praneet. And this is our presentation. With the pressing problem of air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions on the rise due to human activity, it is becoming increasingly necessary for us to find alternative solutions to trucking, which can make a tremendous impact on our carbon footprint. Fortunately, Tesla's new electric semi-truck, reported to be released in 2020, brings us one of the solutions to this problem. However, in order to ascertain the costs and benefits of adapting trucking in the United States to be more electric-centered, it is necessary to create some preliminary models to assess environmental and economic impact of implementing Tesla's semi-truck. In our paper, we worked on three models to answer those questions. In part one, we were tasked with modeling the future proportion of electric semi-trucks compared to the proportion of diesel semi-trucks for five, 10, and 20 years into the future. We approach this task by implementing the lotka volterra system of differential equations for competitive species to determine the percent of trucks that will be electric versus diesel for the desired years. Each equation in this system has two factors that determine the projections for that competitive species in the future. The competitive factor of one species over the other and the birth rate of the species. In the model, the competitive factor is a constant number and models how much better suited one species is for survival in comparison to the other species. We thought this could be translated perfectly to how much more likely a customer is to buy an electric versus diesel semi-truck. For the birth rate in the species model, we determined one birth to be the sale of a truck. So the birth rate was the proportion of trucks bought in a given year to the trucks in operation that year. We first divided our projections for the semi-trucks into two. Projection for short haul semis and long haul semis. We made this decision because the purpose of the two kinds of semis has many differences, and so the market between them might not have very much overlap. And the competitive factor varied for the types of semis, as we, as we will talk about next. So first we had to determine the competitive factor for electric over diesel and diesel over electric semis, where the two numbers are inverses. A significant portion of the, of the decision a buyer makes uh, deciding between diesel and electric semi-trucks can be explained by three sub-factors, the price, the range, and the environmental impact of the trucks. We ultimately determined our competitive factor by multiplying the ratio of the average price point, range, and pounds of carbon dioxide emitted annually by these trucks. However, because the electric semi-truck is a new product, we expected that in the subsequent models produced, significant changes would be made to improve the truck. So we set the competitive factor of electric over diesel semis to grow logistically, and scale the other competitive factor appropriately. Next, we had to determine the birth rate for diesel and electric semis, and we assumed that it would be the same for long and short haul due to the lack of data. We used Tesla's projections for the units of electric trucks sold in the years 2021 to 2024 to obtain the birth rate. We determined this birth rate for electric semis to be an exponential distribution, as the birth rate would be high when the number of trucks existing in the market was low, but would eventually level out. Because the main benefits of electric semi-trucks are significantly um, lower greenhouse gas emissions and long-term projected cost efficiency, individuals or companies motivated to buy electric semi-trucks will likely dispense of their diesel trucks to improve these metrics. Thus, we decided that eventually all electric semi-trucks would take over diesel trucks. So the ultimate birth rate of electric semi-trucks would be equal to the current birth rate of diesel semi-trucks, which makes up the majority of the current truck market. For diesel semis, we determined the birth rate to also have an exponential distribution and set it equal to the current rate for t equals zero and had it approach zero um, as t approaches um, infinity. As we eventually predicted that no customers would buy diesel trucks. We then use these competitive factors and birth rates for electric and diesel semis for short and long haul, put them into the lack of Volterra model and solve them using MATLAB. Which we and then we determined that the proportion of electric semi trucks would be 38.6%, 46.5%, and 59.9% in 5, 10, and 20 years, respectively. As part of our sensitivity analysis, we decided to independently alter the competitive factor and birth rate of the semi trucks to see if the changes in our results matched with our expectations. For example, a 5% increase in the birth rate of semi trucks corresponded to a 3.1 increase. A percent increase in the electric semi-trucks 20 years in the future. This matches with our expectation that the proportion of electric semis would increase with increasing birth rate, but also doesn't mark such a significant change that we would have to question the robustness of our model. 
The rest of the results of our sensitivity analysis can be found in the table. Because the competitive factor and birth rate were functions of time rather than being constant, the model still functioned because the differential equations are taken with respect to time. And this ultimately would help us more accurately determine projections um, of electric diesel trucks uh, 5, 10, and 20 years in the future. In part two, we were tasked with creating a model that would predict the necessary charging stations and charges required along each corridor. In order to accomplish this, we utilized a program that took inputs of the average daily truck density per day and the existing locations of exit ramps, as well as existing information regarding the charging times, miles traveled per fuel, and trucking habits. Because electric chargers are significantly slower than gas charging, with good gas trucks uh, taking 15 minutes to reach a full tank that can last 750 miles, and electric trucks take 30 minutes of charging time to travel a meager 200 miles, that means that uh, gas trucks are roughly nine times more efficient in terms of how many miles you get per minute of charge. Thus, we can expect that the number of charges that we require are significantly higher than the number of gas pumps in order to accommodate for existing traffic flow. From here, armed with a little bit of intuition, we're finally able to begin creating our program. By doing a little bit of sort of like preemptive intuition, uh, we're able to make sure that our program is reasonable and accurate to uh, the prompt. Using the existing habits of truck drivers, we found that on average, charging stations should be placed 50 miles apart. This is because placing stations 50 miles per apart ensures that the trucks are able to reach any charging station just on 20% of their battery life, as recommended by Tesla to avoid damaging the battery. From the average charging time, 30 minutes, uh, we can next see how many trucks will actually pass through any given exit ramp. This will help us figure out the total number of traffic that will pass through any sort of charging station. However, by doing by using this value, uh, which is yielded by taking the annual average daily truck traffic uh, times uh, 1 over 48 to figure out how many uh, trucks pass through every 30 minutes, we only yield the total number of trucks, and not every single truck will need to be refueling at that time. So to, ter to determine how many trucks will actually need to be refueling, we observe that on average, each truck is first able to travel 200 miles before refueling. Assuming that all these trucks have a random amount of charge at any given point, such that they aren't all moving synchronously and all have the exact same charge at every point. That would mean roughly a quarter of all trucks need refueling at any given time. This ultimately gives us that the number of trucks that we will need refueling is, e is effectively just one quarter of the total number of trucks that pass through a specific exit ramp. This ultimately gives us the number of charges required, as any, f any less than that will mean you will have backlog of traffic. Overall, the benefits of this program is it's versatile, adapting to interstates with different amounts of traffic. This helps save costs and make planning more efficient because you can directly implement this program. Furthermore, by combining existing habits of truckers and using existing traffic exits, the numbers given this program can be directly implemented and the daily routines of truckers will not have to be adjusted. Unfortunately, fluctuations in the amount of traffic at different times of day are generalized, which means that the amount of charges predicted by this program are slightly under the given, since the program assumes that all charges are running at 100% efficiency. Thanks, Brandon. Um, now we will move on to part three. Um, in part three, we were tasked with creating a model that would allow us to rank which of the trucking corridors in part two should be targeted for development towards electric trucking first. To assess these trucking quarters, we determined the ranking based on the sum of each quarter's respective scores on four factors, anticipated usage, greenhouse gas emissions, community motivation, and cost budget ratio. Each factor score was standardized from 1 to 1,000 with a higher value indicating that the corridor should be targeted for development the most. Given data on partitions of a corridor, we took the product of a partition's distance and the number of trucks that passed through it to determine the total distance traveled by all cars in each partition and sum the corridor's partitions together to find the total distance for each corridor. Anticipated usage, defined as the expected amount of chargers that occur daily, was chosen because the more electric trucking that will be used in the corridor, the greater the incentive to implement electric trucking as soon as possible. Since a long-haul truck could travel 200 miles per full charge, the total miles traveled daily over 200 yields the expected number of chargers, chargers daily. Next, we focus on the percent change in greenhouse gas emissions from switching to electric trucking because corridors restrict receiving the greatest environmental benefit would have a greater incentive to change. After implementation, there'd be no greenhouse gas emissions from electric trucks. 
Thus, we determined the percent change in greenhouse gas emissions by calculating the greenhouse gas emissions due to diesel trucks divided by the total greenhouse gas emissions in the corridor. Community motivation was chosen because support from the community would facilitate the implementation of such a high-scale project by state officials. To calculate such, we focused on the percent of chargers that would be located in the state as that would directly correlate to how much revenue the state would get from those chargers and the relative size of the state's environmental budget to its GDP as that would determine how much the state is willing to allocate for the environment. To calculate the second part, we took the environmental budget for each state and divided it by the GDP of that state. As the community members elect the governors and state officials char in charge in those respective states, the size of the environment budget would accurately reflect the community's motivation to turn to green resources. We did these calculations for every state on each route and summed the products of our two factors for each state to get a community motivation index for each corridor. As for the cost budget ratio, the implementation process of electric trucking would only work successfully and efficiently if the community has the means to afford it. Thus, we define the ratio to be the cost of building the charge in a state surrounding the corridor over the state's budget towards environmental protection. The cost can be calculated through multiplying the number of chargers located in the state as determined in the results from part two by the cost per charger. Thus, a corridor's cost budget ratio would be the average of the ratios of each surrounding state. As seen in the factors equations, our rankings are most sensitive to the state's budget and the cumulative distance traveled by cars and trucks through each corridor. This is understandable because shifting to electric trucking would be most reasonable when it is fiscally achievable and widely used. After standardizing each factor from 1 to 1,000, we summed up for each corridor respective scores to determine the ranking. We concluded that the corridor from Jacksonville, Florida to Washington, D.C. should be targeted first for implementation as it had the highest overall score. In conclusion to our report, in part one, we modeled the growth of electric semi-trucks 5, 10, and 20 years in the future. In part two, we determined the number of chargers and charging stations required to accommodate the advent of electric semi-trucks. And in part three, we analyzed the factors regarding the implementation on, of electric trucking and thus determined which quarters to focus on first. I'd like to thank Coach Paul Kim for sacrificing one of his weekends to help us participate in this challenge. Siam for hosting this challenge and giving us all the opportunity to apply mathematics in creative real world scenarios. And finally to, uh, to MathWorks for sponsoring this competition and providing us with the free trial usage of MATLAB. Thank you. Thanks. Peace out. Hey guys, Hello, I'm 13. Oh, what the? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Right, dude, I'm so muscly. I'm gonna rip this suit apart. <laughs> Hello, M3 judges. This is Team 13202's uh, submission on Keep on Trucking. With the pressing problem of air pollution. I got our names, my guy. <laughs> you guys are wasting my storage space for every second. <laughs>